nine band nine verbs for IELTS writing task. Hi, my name is Ben Worthington. In this tutorial, we are going to look at nine band nine verbs you can use in your IELTS writing task today. This tutorial is divided into three parts. First, we look at the verbs. Then I'll explain why they are band nine. This is quite interesting and it's useful to help you advance with your IELTS writing. Thirdly, we look at examples of these verbs in IELTS sentences, in IELTS essays. And this is really valuable because unless you get the context of the verbs, then you could be making a very serious mistake, which is forcing the verb, which I'll go into in more detail in a minute. Of nine, band nine verbs. We have hinder, weaken, translate, intensify, debate, conceive, break, delegate, and lobby. Now, some of these verbs have different meanings. For example, I can say break, as in I broke my arm yesterday. And that's probably around A2 or band four or five level. Now, if I were to say that the media broke the story yesterday, then in that context, in that usage, then it's a C2. Interestingly, with these nine verbs, the first four of them are extremely valuable for three types of IELTS task two questions. The three types of questions are discuss both views, give your opinion and advantages and disadvantages. And the reason why these verbs are useful are because, are because they lend themselves very naturally to these types of situations. So hinder means to limit the ability. So if we're discussing the disadvantages, we can say that new government regulations for road safety drastically hinder the effectiveness of logistics transport companies, for example. Can you see? Or new government regulations drastically weaken the effectiveness of logistic, logistics companies. So just ex random examples there, but they lend themselves very useful for these types of essays. The other one, translate, is very useful because it's quite versatile. We can say um, government resistance for new regulations translates into a lack of enthusiasm and ultimately a lack of protection for the environment. So translate is very versatile. We can use it in lots of different essays. Now the other ones have to be used within more caution, with more caution, except conceive. Conceive we could definitely use when we're saying discussing both views, when it's give your opinion, because con conceive is imagine. And I'll give you examples about how we can use though these verbs in IELTS sentences in a second. How do I know that these are band nine? And this is really interesting because there's no other IELTS tutor that I know of who is doing this. And it is quite easy, I think. As you probably know, IELTS is owned by three organizations. It's owned by the IDP, British Council, and Cambridge, in Cambridge English Language Assessment. Those four, three organizations. Cambridge English Language Assessment are the experts who decide about the language criteria. They deal with all the language aspects of the test. Not all, but pretty much most of it. And these IELTS band scores correspond to the Common European Framework for Reference, which is basically the European Union's version of the band scores, except they don't go from band 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They go from A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. 
Now, as you can see from the chat, a C2 correlates directly to a band 9. Now, not directly, but there is a correlation there. Now, if we click on the verbs that I told you before, and if we click using the Cambridge English Language Dictionary, remember this is the organization responsible for the criteria of the exams, or partly responsible for the criteria, we find that the verbs that I give you, the verbs that I gave you, correspond to certain levels. Here we go. Let's click on hinder. I've got it linking to the Cambridge Dictionary. We go there, and what would you see? Look, C2, C2 level. And as I said before, it's to limit the ability of somebody to do something. You can see that C2, look at that, C2, to intensify, to become greater, more serious, more extreme. And this is the case with all of them. I think most of them are C2. Um, now, don't be confused. Here it says B1, but the, ver the meaning that I was giving you, okay, is C2, to change something into a new form. Okay, so all of these are C2, um, or at the very, very worst, C1. Okay, so conceive, pretty certain, like as a verb, C2. Debate. Now, debate as a noun is B2. Debate as a verb, discuss in a formal way, C2. You see? Hinder. Okay? Hinder. Limit the ability of something. Abandoning dated school buses would most likely hinder any efforts to improve road safety around schools. The main reason is that if each parent brings their own child, the traffic around schools would be horrendous. So we can see here it's used correctly and it sounds very natural. And likewise, disregarding a detailed list of activities for a free day would most likely hinder any efforts to obtain the full potential of the said free day. Now, in both cases, it sounds natural. We could use these in the body paragraph. Um, we could either use them in the middle or the beginning because um, it, it would be a strong start to the body paragraph, but nevertheless, they're still useful and they're still valid. It depends on your writing style. I think it would be good actually to use these at the beginning of the body paragraph. In a second, in a minute, I'll give you an example of a bad example. I'll give you an example of a bad sentence to use at the beginning of your body paragraph. Let's have a look at the next one. Weaken cause something to be less strong. Hopefully, you would have spotted the similarity between this sentence and this one, okay? So in this case, it, they are interchangeable, but in this one, it's not interchangeable at all, and it's, as I've noted here, it's grammatically perfect, but it sounds forced, okay? So this one, same as before, abandoning dated school buses would most likely weaken any efforts to improve road safety around roads. The main reason is that if each parent brings their own child, the traffic around schools would be horrendous. So exactly the same as before. Here, disregarding a detailed list of activities for a free day would most likely weaken any efforts to obtain the full potential of the said free day. Weaken any efforts. Why does it sound unnatural because there is not a strong force or movement or group of people or any effort for that matter of people like actively promoting that do not make plans for free days okay so this is why it sounds forced okay and the way you start to spot verbs or words that are forced into sentences is by improving your language skills so it almost becomes natural that something sounds off or that it sounds unnatural and this is a long process to get to that ability um, however if you're writing for IELTS if you can find more lists and more examples 
then it's going to speed up your learning curve or it's going to speed up your advancement or your learning regarding academic writing it's going to speed it up considerably let's have a look translate abandoning dated schools school buses would most likely translate into congested and dangerous roads around the school furthermore the air quality could only worsen translate yeah it's quite straightforward this is very useful to have this verb the reason is is because it's quite versatile i.e you could use it in a lot of different essays the other ones um but these ones you could probably use in the um discuss both views and your opinion and advantages and disadvantages um quite easily whereas this one you could use in most essays okay because it's basically saying this means this which is an essential part of your paragraph because it's you developing your argument and your position now second example disregarding a detailed list of activities for a free day would most likely translate into a sloppily organized day replete of spontaneous distractions and unforeseen costs this is writing rather aggressively okay because it, it it's there's no doubt in the reader's mind after reading this about my position on this issue um and the issue with basically was you know should you plan your day or should you um leave it to be spontaneous um without planning and replete by the way a very good word it means um full of spontaneous distractions okay a day full of spontaneous distractions and unforeseen costs let's move on intensify this is my favorite so abandoning dated school buses would most likely intensify any road safety or pollution issues the school district might already be facing so here it just makes to become stronger it intensifies these issues okay now once again i can't use it intensify um because there's no real sort of like issue um around unplanning or not planning a day okay um so once again this is why a list is very useful if you want to start using these and also examples and as i said before on the online course there's lots of lists and examples to help speed in up the learning process to help you to get your writing better or to improve your writing faster let's go debate to discuss in a formal way those who debate in favor of abandoning school transport might may have forgotten important issues such as air quality road safety and dual income families can you see so in this way i've used it more as argue in favor of okay um and once let's read this one again not really suitable because there's no real debate here yes there's no you cannot imagine two groups of people arguing whereas in this case you could easily imagine a group of parents arguing with another group of parents saying bring back school buses no each to their own everyone's got their own way of transport of transport so this is why debate uh, well this is why some verbs are more suitable or more useful than other ones here in well as you saw before we could definitely use hinder uh, translate um, not weaken but we could definitely use some of the others for the free activities essays now final one conceive here this is just let me share a useful spelling rule and that's i before e except after c you probably know that already <laughs> anyway it is difficult to conceive any benefits of abandoning school transport okay i won't go into it anymore uh, into any more detail but here what i wanted to say is that two things this is a useful word because we're talking about opinions we're talking about the advantages and disadvantages 
or we're talking about uh, discussing both views. So here it's quite versatile. We can conceive of the views of that question. We can conceive both views. Can you see how it's much more versatile than some of the other ones? So conceive is definitely useful. And as we saw before, this is C2 level, which equates to band nine. Second point, if we were starting the body paragraph like this, it is, it would be terrible. Well, not terrible, but it's just not good form. And the reason why is because it creates reader strain. I'm going a bit off topic now, but it's useful. Um, it creates reader strain because I have to wait until the middle of the sentence until I find out what this object pronoun refers to. This is why I put those dots. And this is why this sentence, we couldn't use it as the topic sentence to introduce the body paragraph or to start the body paragraph. We would use the it in the middle of the, well, we'd use it later on in the body paragraph when it's clear what the it refers to. And it would be useful to use it because it would improve our cohesion and coherence score because we don't have to keep repeating the issue that we're talking about. We can just refer to it as it. So this is why it's, um, if we do start the sentence with an object pronoun, it's better when it's crystal clear what that object pronoun is referring to. Next one. Um, here, it is difficult to conceive any benefits to planning a valuable free day, perhaps a more optimized schedule, but the stress of, okay. So here it's quite versatile again. Um, so this is why another, why it's quite useful. There we go. Nine band nine verbs for your IELTS writing task. Now, my recommendation is that you start using these words in your IELTS essay. Use them today, get familiar with these words, write out some example sentences and get some feedback. If you do want some feedback, have a look at IELTSpodcast.com. We've got an essay correction service there. It's 24 hours so you can improve fast. And personally, I think the best way to improve is by getting feedback and getting guidance. Now, there's three things I want to you to do before you stop watching this video. Number one, in the comments section, can you write out a sentence with one of the verbs? And I'll try and give you feedback on that sentence um, and try and help you out. Number two, and this is very, very serious. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Without these likes, I do not sleep at night. Number three. If you want some free IELTS materials, go to IELTSpodcast.com and sign up. And as I said before, while you're there, you might as well check out the online course and the essay correction service. Thank you for watching and have a great day and good luck with your IELTS preparation.